Welcome everyone to the anticipated uh, Temtem Smash or Pass. <laughs> uh, are you as excited as I am? Because uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Welcome Fox Egg. I hope you've had a great weekend. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm really excited. <laughs> this is either going to go incredibly great or incredibly terrible. <laughs> Smash pass or oh, hell no! <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. Yeah, smash pass or cuddle. <laughs> but I guess if I uh, cuddle it, it's technically a pass because I'm not smashing it. So I guess it's it would count as a pass. Not really know that I would cuddle it. <laughs> I don't know. Should I just should I just start or should I? Like, wait, like, I, I guess Scorp would really want to see this too, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going to be such a bonk stream. <laughs> uh, I can already hear the bonks coming in. <laughs> That's really going to be something. Sorry to slightly kill the mood. Uh, but basically, I might have to wait a month uh, to go to my new school because, whoop, they do the uniforms out of stock. No way! <laughs> For real? How did that happen? Oh, that sounds that sounds awful. In, in Germany, we don't have school uniforms, so that's a problem that I just can't imagine. Like not being able to switch schools because sc school uniforms out of stock. What? That sounds like a nightmare. I'm so sorry for you. Yeah, Angie, I agree. That does sound like something that you should get Angie about. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what do you think? Should we should we start the smasher pass? Or should we wait? I mean <laughs> oh, I, I, I shouldn't postpone it, right? I mean, we can at least have a look at the Tempedia. So we're going to have to rank 164 temps. I don't know which one 162 is. I think it's the evolution of Anna here, so... Uh, yeah. That's probably not going to be too bad. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Huh. It's not that many temp temps compared to, like, 889 Pokemon. <laughs> So I think we're good. I still don't have all of the temps. I really need to start catching all of them. I feel like I'm missing so many. A lot of them are just evolutions that I don't have. Except for the Beagle, because you have to breed that one. We should maybe get started. Yeah, it, it's a lot of temps that we have to go through. Okay, so. Uh, let's start with the Mimit, which is a shapeshifter. Um, I'd say shapeshifter is pretty much... <laughs> oh, thank you for the Laka Kefalos. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your luck. I know you're streaming too right now. Okay, so Mimit, the shapeshifter. I think a shapeshifter is a definite smash. Does it work? Yes. Next one. The Ori. One of the first prototypes created in Nantolabs. Ori Ori's early versions were the forerunners of Digital Tem. Inquisitive creatures by design, they show great curiosity and a boundless appetite for information. Hmm. Mm. I I think the Ori might just be a pass. I, I feel like I don't even want to cuddle that. I, I, I don't think the Ori is for me. The Zaobian, on the other hand. I don't get the description yet because I don't have a Zaobian, do I? Damn it. Okay. That's a pity. I would have loved to read that description. You know what? Let me actually get up the Tempedia too so I can... Look up stuff that I don't have yet. 
just in case we have we have me undecided so let's read the that will be in the description if I can find it um Zobians are part of the second generation of Digital 10. Created with much more refined technology, they are more intelligent friends and companions as well as sturdier in battle. Hmm, they're sturdier, okay. That does influence the rating a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. Is that already smashable? That's the question. Would I smash a Zaobian? Huh. I don't think I would. I, I feel like... I also wouldn't. I, I think this is a pass. I, I kind of like that it's sturdy. Like that sounds really good, but other than that, it doesn't really have much going for it. So I, I think it's a pass. The Chromeon, on the other hand, Chrome, Chrome, Chromeon, you come and go. This recent breakthrough of Nantelabs uses modified Koish DNA to create a digital term term with a variable second typing for maximum versatility. Ooh, do I have to rank the Chromions individually? Let me see on the... What, what does the Tempedia say? Does Tempedia rate... I uh, like the, the Temtem Wiki. The Temtem Wiki rates them as one as well, I think. Yeah. Hmm. Should I rate them differently depending on their type? Uh, let's see. Does it do anything. I mean, it's always digital. So, the question is just what the second element is. Hmm. Okay, so for the digital variant, I think it's a definite smash. I mean, it, it, it's got that tongue, it's got that tail, it, it's, it's a smash. Um, hmm, is there a variant that I wouldn't smash? Uh, no, I, I don't. Oh, although... No, I, I don't think so. No, they 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 all look smashable. I, I think it's fair to rate the Chromion as, as one. What? <laughs> Just because I want to smash it, I get bonked? <laughs> okay, Halsey. Uh, this is a near model from Nantilabs. Uh, it's specifically designed for dojo tamers. More intelligent and empathic than older digitals. It is much more responsive to human commands and those fortunate enough to have one as a friend wouldn't change it for any other. The Parian neutrality. Hmm. Huh. Is it smashable though? That is the question. It looks like it has quite sharp edges, so... I don't know. A lot of things I could imagine aren't really that possible with it. I, I mean, it is... Uh, I, I, I don't think I would want to smash that. I, th I think I'd be afraid that I might get hurt. Yeah, I think this is a pass too. Okay, Morgu, let's see what the uh, Temtem Wiki says about you. This model represents a significant update from Halsey. Surprisingly, Nantilabs found examples of escape Morgu e evolving on their own, further proving the point that digital Tem are every bit as alive and natural as other vari ra varieties. There we go. Hmm. I feel like this one has the same problem. It's just so... It looks so sharp. It looks like it could hurt me. And I, I don't know. I'm not looking... I'm not looking to get hurt when I want to smash, you know? I, I'm looking for a good time when I want to smash. And getting hurt does not look... That, that, that doesn't sound like a good time. I, I think I pass. Oh, the platy pet. Oh, it's so... Oh, so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Scarp. Um, quick recap of the smash or pass of what you've missed so far. Um, smash, pass, pass, smash, pass, pass, and now we're at the bloody bed. <laughs> yeah, passionately hacking with Temtem. <laughs> That's what we're discussing today. Which Temtem should you passionately hack? Okay, we're at the bloody bed. <laughs> if you guys have opinions about these, feel free to like uh, say them too. <coughs> and which of them you would smash or pass? I'm always eager to hear the discussion and to see if we we like disagree. Because I don't know, 
Maybe you would want to smash a thing with razor claws. I don't know. <laughs> you say it's too small, so pass. It's adorable though, and I, I love the Platypad. Platypad was popular by a cartoon series, and ever since then it has been one of the most popular tantrum of kids. The series had an educational purpose to teach children that toxic tantrum are also valid and can be good friends. I, I agree with Scorp though. It is, it is like, it is like such a small little cute thingy. I, I can't smash that. I just, I, I would pass, but I would cuddle it to death. I would definitely cuddle this one to death. <laughs> Fox X just passing everything. <laughs> no, he's not cringe. It's a valid opinion to say I would pass everything. <laughs> Might smash the previous thing. Bro, the mogul has like razor claws on his hands. How would you smash that? I'd be afraid. <laughs> I'd not smash that. <laughs> I Yeah, I can show it for longer. I mean, there's no reason to smash that thing. Like, maybe you could keep it as a... Ooh, pokey catch. It's kind of hot, what? I mean, it, it does have the booty, I think. It, it looks like it has the booty, so I I can see that point. But still, the razor blade hands are a, a major turn off for me. <laughs> and Fox X has the boards. Feels like he had an uh, overproductive boyfriend. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Platox. Uh, this one's a bit bigger than the other one. Would I smash that? That's the thing. Platox share common ancestors with Cypad, but the species diverged centuries ago. While Cypad developed uh, opposable thumbs, uh, Platox specialized in surviving in polluted environments. Today, they are the most successful feathered temtem of Tukma. Yeah, bigger plat. Uh, would I smash that? I, I don't think so. I think I would... I think I'm a pass, but again, I would cuddle it. I would cuddle it to death. The platy moss, on the other hand... <laughs> Charles Tenwin describes them as platox, but more so. This is usually taken as a classic aboriginal understatement of platymus were among the most successful apex predators before large-scale taming and remain very effe uh, effective fighters. Yeah. Oh, come on, Pokemon community game. Give us the Pokemans so you can fuck them too. <laughs> Still pass, but getting better. <laughs> nah, no, I think I'd smash, actually. I, I think I'd smash. Like, it it's got... It's got that Parry the Platypus vibe, and I mean, who wouldn't want to smash Parry, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, okay, I deserve that bonk. <laughs> I deserve that bonk, that's fine. Yeah, no, I'd smash that. I'd smash the Platypus. I, I can I can dig that. Okay, Swally, that's, a, that's difficult, ooh. When the harvest season is on, omniscient fruit pickers are always careful not to accidentally damage the delicate uh, chrysalis like swally. They grow on certain vines of the rainforest uh, canopy, dropping to the jungle floor once mature and mobile. Hmm. I, I think I agree with you guys. I think this is a pass. Hmm. Loali, though. I mean, Loali is really cute. Uh. Would I smash it though? Is it cute enough to smash? You guys say pass. Delicate and graceful creatures, Loalis are all wings and eyes and natural charmers. Uh, their hypnotic eyes can completely dazzle their enemies and their constantly fluttering wings allow them to change colors in an instant. Huh. There's a point where they get too cute. Yeah, it feels like Whoopi is in. Yeah, I agree with that. I, th I think this one is a pass, but it's it's a definite cuddle. Like this one, I would just cuddle this and I, like having like a Loali on my shoulder and just cuddling it. That would be, that would be the dream. But yeah, I, I don't think I could smash it. It's too cute to smash. 
The Tataru. Ooh, okay, this is interesting. Despite their impressive height, Tataru are quite shy and not naturally aggressive. That's why they need proper training before battle. Uh, white Tataru are recognized by their upright position and sensitive antenna. Always alert. Hmm. Maybe enough pass. <laughs> okay, we got a pass. Huh. That's a big boy. Like, this one's like... This is like not a small tam, like this is a big boy. Hmm. And it's it is rabbit like, so that is you know that endurance. That rabbit like endurance that might be also it's got like, you know, it, it's good at everything basically. I mean it might not be, you know, the fastest at the good old in and out game, but it's probably very endurance since you know rabbit so I think it might be a smash I think I'd smash <laughs> I'd smash the Tataru okay Garunda I have to look up the <laughs> yeah fine I deserve the bong I deserve the bong I have to look that one up on the on the wiki We're far now, wow. Oh, website not loading, park. <laughs> yeah, possibly smash, Garunda. <coughs> Sorry. I mean, I can see the argument. Um, popularly known as the monster of the sewers, the species descends from prototemic life forms of the Salatl Reservoir. It is, not su uh, it is no surprise it has adapted to an extremely toxic ecosystem. Oh, so it's basically a toxic dinosaur. Hmm. Huh. <coughs> Thank you for the blessing. I don't know what's out of my nose right now. My nose is not happy. Yeah, it has poison. That might be a pass. <laughs> not uh, smashing unhygienic people. That is a good thing. You should not smash unhygienic people. I agree. Yeah, the poison might be a turn off. I agree. Huh. <laughs> it's got abs though. Like, like look at them abs. Like th those muscles. Hmm. And it's it's actually taller than me. Like I'm uh. This this thing is uh, 176. I'm 172. So this thing's actually taller than me. I I'm kind of into that, you know. <laughs> that is that is a huge advantage, I'd say. On the other hand, it's like 240 kilos. Like that is that's a fat boy. Ah. Uh. I, I don't know. I'm not that much of a fan of a fat boy. Especially like this thing is... Um, let's put it that way. Average humans weigh about like 70 kilos plus minus 10 depending on their height. Um, so this thing is like three humans. So I, I think this is a bit too heavy for me. I, I have to pass. And I, I don't think I'd cuddle it because it's, it's poisonous. I, I think it's a pass. Same, but still, yeah, it, it is a pass. I'm eating a burrito, but I'm way superior than all of you. <laughs> Prepare to shout. <laughs> okay, Mozu. Oh, the adorable Mozu descends from the pie. Mevil Pachy Derms that roam the Glengan Forest. Back when it was part of the great warrior forest spanning almost half of Peninsula. Okay. Huh. Smash that though, question mark. I mean it's it, it's got horns that might get in the way. It, it's got that it, it's got that good snout though. Like that like that is that is very much a, a positive but on the other hand it's also so cute I think this is one of those that are too cute to smash I, I think this is a pass but a cuddle 
It's a definite cuddle. The Magmood, on the other hand. Huh. Let's see what it says about the Magmood. Temtemologists believe Magmood developed their characteristic flaming mane as an adaption to the cold and weather climate of Lochberg Moors. Hmm. <laughs> smash pass. He could carry me in those uh, horns, so smash. <laughs> also look at the weight. Yeah, it is. It, it's a heavy boy, but uh, I th I feel like this is one of those heavy boys that are you know good heavy because this thing is not gonna lie on top of me or something like that. No, I I'm more looking at at uh, at the the you know. And yeah, I think it's a great bonus that you can can lie in in the horns and like be carried by it. I, I think that's a great bonus. Also, apparently it's really, really warm, so you can like cuddle it perfectly after the passionate hugging time, so. I mean, I can understand the weight thingy, but again, this is one that I wouldn't s smash uh, on the bottom, you know? <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the bottom on this duo. But I think, yeah, I, I think this might be a smash. I mean, again, it is warm, it is cuddly, it has the 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 the, the good snout, it, it has horns that don't look too sharp that can carry me. I mean, I think that's just a smash, man. That's just a smash. Oh, the pharaoh. Okay, this one's easy. This one is a pass, but I'd cuddle it. Like this one's like a parrot, you know? Like you totally cuddle it and everything. But yeah, <laughs> definitely a pass. Uh, well, I'm sh uh, sharing my screen right now, and my friend said I'm not gonna be asexual after this. <laughs> Maybe who knows? Yeah, the weight def was definitely understandable. <laughs> I only cut after sex. That's my rule. <laughs> nah, that's a stupid rule. You can cuddle people without having sex with them. Okay, the Farrick. Would I would I smash that? Uh, I mean, it's quite a small boy. It's also a very light boy. Due to their bigger size and stronger physique, Farrick don't actually need camouflage, but they still love to flaunt their turquoise feathers uh, with great pride. What does this one say? Farrick tends to hide in treetops and lurk their green mask, allowing them to blend in with the foliage. Often the only way to look at them is to look for the tiger gleam of their eyes. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you for throwing stuff at me. Also, welcome to the stream, cuddly fox, dreamy fox. How are you? <laughs> How's your Sunday been? We're doing the 10 times measure pass as a celebration of 100 followers. Woohoo! <laughs> so far we got 5 smashes and 11 passes. Uh, our most recent pass was the Pharaoh. Our most recent smash was the Magamut. Uh, would I? I don't think I'd smash that. I think this is a pass. <laughs> I'm okay, and you? I'm good too. Uh, yeah, to, the, the week has been fine. The weekend was good. <laughs> Thank you for throwing stuff at me. Yeah, the, the weekend's been great so far. <laughs> There goes all the stuff throwing. <laughs> okay, the grandpa. I actually need to look up the description for this one because I don't have it. Okay, the description says the uh, authoritarian stare of a grandpa portrays the long time and many battles that it takes to achieve this evolutionary state. They have earned their respect among younger wild tem. Ooh, so it's a dominatrix. Ooh, and it's a really big boy. And it's not heavy. It's like... It's like a slim fit, you know? Like, hmm. <laughs> You'd pass. <laughs> you doubt he can even uh, do much. I mean... He, he might be... I don't know. I don't think grandpas are that old. And they probably get, like, even older. So they're, like, probably more, like, middle-aged or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's this thing speed? It's actually, a, I think it's a pretty fast 10, so... I don't think that speed would be the problem when you smash, so... Honestly, it's like, the, the description basically states pretty clearly that this thing will dominate you, and... 
also as you know it's, it's got that height advantage and it's it's a slim it's a slim boy very slim boy i think i'd smash that i think i'd smash that sure i'd smash that <laughs> okay the ampling native to the steep slopes of the iwaba highlands <laughs> here comes the bong i like to be dominated but not by grandpa <laughs> I mean, maybe not now in my life, but like later in my life, Grandpa can totally get it. So overall, I think still a smash. Native to the steep slopes of the Iwapa Highlands, Ambling are as adorable as electrifying. New Edo children are familiar with them thanks to regular school trips to observe, observe this charming creature in a natural habitat. I think this is an easy pass and I don't know if I'd cuddle it because it's it's electric and I think it might hurt me. I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> He's probably... Uh, he'll probably be dust at the time. Uh, I'll just get another one. <laughs> it's not like they are rare or something. Free and white electric chair. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it's a pass. Okay, the empathy. I actually have to look up. So I'm playing and Amphithea. Um, Amphithea are the prime example of Servus Electricus, Agile and Majestic. Their mating habit of look locking horns causes beautiful display of electric sparks and discharge arcs that have been compared to tiny aurora. Okay, so... <laughs> This sounds like, if I was an ampling, this thing would be a ton of fun to smash. Um, but as a humanoid who is who is not immune to electricity, um, this does still sound like an electric chair on, on legs. So um, I think I will pass on it and I will also not cuddle it. <laughs> I, 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 I think I don't want to die, so thank you. Getting another one uh, makes a kinda sex toy though. <laughs> no, I, I, I do not think I'm into... <laughs> I do not think I'm into getting electric shocks. I, I don't think I'm into that. Especially not on the level of the empathy. Okay, the bun bun! These adorable creatures are probably a remnant from the times when Tukman Kisiwa were a single island. While their strong earth DNA is clearly of Kisiran origin, the crystalline content in their paths um, betray a definite Tukmani influence. They're social and easy to tame. Oh, I, I, I didn't even notice there was a Poke Catch. Damn it! <laughs> I missed the Poke Catch. I agree with the cuddle. And yeah, I think it's a pass and a cuddle. I, I don't think I'd smash it. The Madrid, on the other hand, <laughs> bigger and more resilient than Ban Ban, Madrid are hard, hardy tem, uh, used to extreme weather and conditions. Their extremely fine sense of hearing makes them very vulnerable, uh, shouting tem tem once tamed, but also harder to catch in the wild. Ooh, I think. I think this is a this is a smash. <laughs> I think this is very much a smash. I mean, it's got the rabbit energy. We all know how good rabbits are to smashing. It's got an insane speed, so this is probably even better in bed than the Tataru. So, I, I'd probably smash the moderate even more than I'd smash the Tataru. I think. <laughs> yeah, I know. I deserve the bong. Wait, would you smash? Fox egg, would you smash? <laughs> Would you smash the moderate? Would you? <laughs> but also feel nice to be a uh, tough face. Yeah, it's like... Also, it's got that fur. <laughs> like, it, it's got the fur. It's got... It's got the pretty crystals. And like... Yeah, it's just... Also, it's like... Like, like it's got the, the stamina. <laughs> A fast rabbit with an inbuilt scarf that uh, what not uh, to love. Yeah, I agree. The mother is definitely a perfect smash. 
Okay, the Hidori. This is one. This one's interesting because I also have this one as Luma. This cutie is an adept climber, thanks to the little suckers. Suckers. Located in each in each of its eight stubby legs. Wait, what? For the same reason, omniscient children quickly learn to hide their cookies instead of putting them on the highest shelf. Ooh. Ooh. You would cuddle it? Um, I think this is a smash. It's got suckers on its legs. Like, that would be so... That would be amazing. Also, I remember someone said that it would that it looks like a banana. And I, I, I kind of can't get that thought out of my head. So I, I think this is just a smash, man. This is a smash. For sure. I mean <laughs> Is that about Luma? <laughs> oh, also, not gonna lie, I, I really like the um, the neck piece of the Hidori. I think that looks really cool. So, it, it's got the looks. It's got the cool looks. It's got the banana up here. And it's got the suckers. So, I, I think it's a, it's very much a smash. Ooh, the Taifu, though. Um, brought up on a steady diet of stolen cookies, Hidori evolves into the more agile Taifu. They are naughty but cute creatures, naturally given to light-hearted mischief, but very serious opponents in battle. Hmm. <laughs> Asexual midlife crisis go bro, I guess. <laughs> it looks like a dark home, but it's a leaf. Oh yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Oh, the Taifu though. Hmm. I mean, it's shorter than me, so it doesn't have the height advantage. I'm guessing it still has the suckers on its hands. But would I smash it? Huh. Huh. I don't know. I don't know if I'd smash this one. This one's difficult. Hmm. It kind of lost the banana appears, so this is this is not helping. Um Huh, so both have the suckers. This one has the banana up here and the cool cone. This one doesn't have as much of a cool cone though. On the other hand, the way it like already stands, that's like already basically... He's like basically in position to fuck. Like he just has to like push you over and then he can get at it basically. So, hmm. It's short though. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess I deserve the bongs. It, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Become paste. Uh, I don't know, I, I think I, I... I might have to come back to the Typhoon, but for now I think I'd smash. I'd probably smash other times first, but this one I think is smashable. Okay, the full move. These times are known for their ability generate vapor like charming little steam engines since that means losing a lot of moisture this species prefers to remain in the water and use steam jets uh, for proposeration rather than its short legs hmm i think this is a pass and also a color i think the horn might get in the way and also it's, it's like a really small thing i i don't like that and also, I think this one would be better suited as a sauna and not as a as something you'd smash. So, yeah, I think this is a pass. Okay, the Wimplum, though. Wimplum takes Fomo's clever use of water vapor one step further. Flying on steam wings, uh, this species boasts increased range and speed paired with a stronger attack thanks to its sturdier horn. Ah, uh, mm. I I think it's a pass, but it's a cuddle. Like, like it's the horn. The horn is the real turn off. You know, it's too pointy. It's just too pointy. 
Okay, the scale. This species of Temtem is notoriously bad tempered and trainers need all their skill to handle them. Once tamed, these muscular creatures can deliver powerful tail blows in battle. Mm. <laughs> I'd stick a marshmallow on the horn and uh, around the campfire. Ooh, that's a good idea too. I like that. I think that might be what I would use my <laughs> what I would use my uh Wimplum for too. That sounds like a good idea. Hmm. I think the scale is a pass, but a definite cuddle. The skunch. Unlike the lesser brethren, skunks are capable of walking on two legs and can even stand on their muscular tails. This evolution allows them to pummel enemies with their massive fists, but it's done nothing uh, to soften their aggressive mood. Oh, so it's aggressive and bad, you're saying? Hmm. <laughs> oh, hell no! <laughs> Something with the face. Ah, uh, I, I can see the face argument. Uh, on the other hand, it's got, it's got big hands, though, you know? I guess it's got big hands. It's aggressive and bad. It will probably dominate you. Those are pretty good things, I think. Uh, mm. What are turn downs, though? Um... It definitely skipped leg day. I don't like that. The face, I think, is uh, something to turn down you from. Hmm. Yeah, I think I, I think I pass. I, I think I pass. I never expected looks to be like this, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> I mean, I'm just assessing them. You actually have to like consider everything before you can make an make a valid opinion. You know. Otherwise, your opinion is just trash because it's funded on nothing. <laughs> you know, you have to actually consider th these things. Okay, Goatee. Voted best Temtem every year by a neutral enthusiast. Goatee is a effective as it's cute. This little crowd pleaser is particularly popular among casual even tamers. Okay, yeah, I think this is a pass and a cuddle. It's just too cute to fuck. It's way too cute to fuck. <laughs> Move flank. Hmm. With their imposing horns, grazing move flank hurts, used to be serious uh, natural hazards of the Gasiran plants. Uh, the tribes soon learn how to tame them to avoid dangerous stampedes. Hmm. So this thing's almost as tall as me. So these horns are massive. I think I pass. I think the horns are too big for me. I, I pass. Too big of a horn. Okay, the Rolda. Once king of the Gesemen Savannah, this species boasts incredibly hard uh, lamellar plates before the times of Chacha Ture. They were used in tribal warfare as armored cavalry. Hmm. <laughs> Scorp would smash the, the move flank and hold on to the horns. <laughs> yeah, that's a bonk. <laughs> ah, the road, the road. I, I, I don't think I like the horns. I'm not a horn fan. I am a pass on horn. Too much horn. I think I skip one. Yeah, I, I skip one. Okay, how chick. Clever but somehow naive. The gentle how chick are ideal as a first mental tem. Uh, for novice trainers. They are empathic and intuitive, capable of understanding the subtlest of mentalism. Mm. <laughs> Shut up, you don't even understand. Oh, <laughs> Come on. He understands when you're doing the H word. Uh, how chick? I think it's a pass because I think it's still too cute to cuddle. Yeah, I think it's too cute to cuddle. I like too, too cute to fuck. I, I cuddle. I cuddle the hot chick. The tentile, on the other hand. Like now we're talking. Hot chick eventually evolves into the more mature tentile. Um, 
shooter creatures whose uh, writhing tentacles serve as appropriate metaphors for the ever twisting sibly line, uh, sibling minds. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's a smash. The, the tentacle is definitely a smash. Ooh. I also have to uh, rearrange this a little bit. I didn't think we'd get uh, more than 10 temps that I'd smash. But here we are. We had more than 10. <laughs> Shove those tentacles in my... Uh -huh. <laughs> no bongs for that one, I agree. That is fine. Also, you have to consider it's a mental type tem. So this tem knows exactly how you want it. So I think for the same reason, now guys, is also the, the, the definite smash. I mean, it just, it's got the tentacles. It's got the the cool looks. And you know, it, it also, it, it knows exactly what you want. So definitely smash, yeah. No <laughs> no asexual crisis for this one. Yeah, I agree. Chimpanki legends are full of uh, sage nagais giving cryptic advice uh, to folk heroes. An early example of the traditional association of the species with wisdom, insight, and spirituality. Hmm. Oh, pokey catch. This time I won't miss it. Yeah, this just... Nagais is just perfect for bed. It's definitely a bedtime time. Awful. Okay, let's think. Probably imitation from an ancient serpentine strand of natural tem. Awful show remarkable adaptation of noxious conditions. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> they feature prominently in the art of ancient proto barbarian cultures who feared and revered them. Hmm. It's kind of like, like a slug. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it has the snake boost, but it's also toxic. And I don't know. I, 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 I yeah, I don't fancy. No, I, I don't smash. This is a pass. Okay, Nidrasi. We actually have to look at the wiki again. Uh, long considered to be a legend, this species was scientifically verified just decades ago. Temtemologists are still debating how the nervous system of Nick Drazil's uh, copes with three separate centers. Huh. I mean, you can smash three for the price of one, so... Hey, Foxack, you caught it. Congrats. <laughs> I feel like the mental ties should probably always be good. Uh, yeah, probably. With this one, it's like three in one, but not my thing. Mm. BRB going to eat. Have a great meal, uh, Scorp. Bone apple teeth. Uh, it's a big boy, though. Nitrazi is like uh, bigger than me. Also, a lot heavier. This one might be one of the heaviest. I, I think it is a three in one, but I think it's too heavy for me. I think it's a pass for that reason. Uh, did I skip one? No, okay. Mana P. Uh, Caprius and Stubborn. These tend to roam the side of the Anak Volcano, uh, grazing and burning coals instead of grass. Notably difficult to tame, they set the right expectation for prospective fire temple tamers. I think it's a pass. I don't want to get burned. Also, it is, it is kind of really cute. I, I think it's I think it might already be too cute to fuck, so I think it's it's a cuddle. It's a pass, but it's a cuddle. Capire, I actually have to look that one up, because I don't have the description for it. Uh, these uh, temperamental creatures often appear in Mauritian folklore as tricksters. They unreliable, their unreliable nature embedded deeply in the culture. Uh, highly territorial, they breed in Anak and make sure any visitors know just how unwelcome they are. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's a tricky one because it, it it has the emo vibe and I love the emo vibe, you know? Uh, would I smash the fire emo? I 
I don't know. I don't know. Would I smash a fine? Smash but not first choice? Yeah, I think I think it's a smash but not a first choice, yeah. That 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 kinda sounds right. It's like yeah, it's cool, but it's fire. I think if it wasn't fire it would be easier. Lapinite. Extremely common in Tukma. These little creatures are often the first temtem of every young Quetzaljeno. They are cheerful and resistant uh, playmates for toddlers, and it is common practice to lightly file off the edge of the crystals to ensure safety. It's a, it's a, it's a pass, but it's a cuddle. I agree. Uh, check this card. Okay, sure. Uh, give me a sec. Okay, um, hmm. Azurok. This tantrum is a common sight in the minds of Quetzal, where miners appreciate their skill when dislodging large chunks of ore and gemstones. It's correct, an expert uh, handling is a professional requisite for most of them. Hmm. This one's difficult. I think the crystals are a turn off. It's cool, but man, yeah, it's. A I think the crystals are a definite turn off. I I don't fancy the crystals at all. But you know, it's it, it's got something going. Like, it could be a smash. It's just not. Okay, the Xenorath. Oh, this one I don't know. Huh. Is the Xenorath a smash or a pass? Let's read about it. Uh, any given night at the Jaguar Lounge, drunk miners whisper tall tales about uh, the great crystalline behemoth lurking in the darkest abyss under the city. This temtem is probably the base of all those urban legends. Probably. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's really big. Like, I think, you know what? I, I think I'm sold on, on on the size. I mean, if it's if the entire thing is like two, uh, sorry, three meters tall. Imagine how big it is packing. You know, like how big that junk would be. You know, like like I mean, you can't really pass on that. I think I, I think so. Yeah, it's it's, it's a smash. Okay, the river. Uh, related to diverse, now extinct subspecies of Sumpanki uh, Vulps mentalis, river used to be hunted by the counts of House Brassside. Nowadays, they are protected and thrive in the forest of the Eastern Arbery. It's a pass and it's a cardinal. And this one's just too cute to fuck. The Aoi, though, we, we, can, we can discuss the Aoi. Fast and sinuous like wildfire, Aoi are cunning and sly creatures who routinely outsmart all but the most seasoned of tamers, even in the wild. Uh, they delight in tricking the more gullible revere. Yes, mental type too, I agree. And also it doesn't look as, you know, I'm gonna burn your booty off fire. It looks like, looks like a decent amount of fire, you know? Like with the... Just like with the uh, Magmode, where it's like, yeah, this, this Tantum will keep you nice and warm and cozy and it will be lovely, you know? I think... Hmm, I don't know, though, about the rest. I'm not really a furry, so the, f the foxy furry part is not really an appeal to me. It's more like the combination of mental and fire that appears to me, you know? Having a partner that completely knows what I want while also keeping me warm, cozy and cuddly. That is a really cool fantasy, but I, I think I think I'm a bit turned off by the furry part. So I think it's a it's a pass. But um I mean if it th the thing is I don't drink alcohol. But if I would and I would get drunk and the Aoi would ask me out and we would somehow end up smashing, I wouldn't regret it. Let's put it that way. Let's just say I wouldn't smash it if, if I'm sober. 
the bigoo. I'm gonna look that up. Fast and soon is like wildfire. Nope, that's all we. Bigo. Um, if there's an easily animated temtem, that's bigo. Completely ill tempered. Many tamers have found uh, to their cost that these gastropods compensate their slow pace with outstanding tenacity in battle. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's a pass too. This one's definitely a pass. I also wouldn't cuddle it, it's a slug. Okay, the Bavawa. These Tentem are flamboyant creatures with a flunky sense of humor and boundless love for pranks and practical jokes. Many a naughty kid has donned a Bavawa costume to cause havoc in the Quesa Carnival. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh. Okay, um, hmm. I mean, it's a slug, so that is a downgrade. But it has also the the, um, uh, the hard licking as an attack, so that is pretty cool. But it is a slug. And other times I have that move too, so yeah. I think it's a pass. Obi Wan! <laughs> Obi Wan's simple and friendly appearance belies their boldness as a creation. They are the digital embodiment of a subatomic particle whose very existence raises almost as many questions as it answers for physics modeling. Hmm. You say cuddle, <laughs> it looks like a light bulb. Yeah, but it is Obi Wan, you know? Ah, uh, I, I can't just not smash Obi Wan, you know? I mean, what kind of Star Wars fan would I be if I wouldn't smash Obi-Wan? <laughs> On the other hand, it do be it do be really cute. And like, can I fuck that? Can I fuck something that is this cute? Also, it's only like 12 centimeters high. That's that's like really small. Like it, it wouldn't even it wouldn't even be a good dildo or something. I hate to I hate to put a pass, but I have to put a pass. I'm sorry, Obi Wan. <laughs> I would cuddle you to death, though. That that I would definitely do, but I just wouldn't smash you. You're just too cute to smash. Yeah, I think I, I think the same applies to them. <laughs> I think the same applies to them. Uh, conventional physics can explain why Obi Ten is a two-in-one term. Uh, how their attraction repulsion dynamic uh, actually works. Tamers don't really care, since this tam is empathic enough to be tameable. Not to mention, off the charts cute. Yeah, it's a pass, but it's, it's definitely a cuddle. Double team is kind of weird. No, it's, it's adorable and I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, the Kaku. Now we're getting to the interesting tams, I feel like. <laughs> Less known than its evolution, Kaku are delightful creatures, cute beyond description. They tend to keep their petals wrapped around their body for uh, protection, although no sane person would ever want to hurt a Kaku. Hmm. Welcome back, Scorp. You say pass immediately? Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I think it might be too, too cute to smash again. I, th I think it's too cute to smash, so we pass. Yeah. Why do you punk scarf? You didn't do anything yet. Okay, the Saku. Some say the first airship designs were inspired by this Tentem's ability to inflate air pockets within its body, allowing it to float and drift with the uh, prevailing winds. Hmm. Honestly, the idea of something uh, being able to fly and like bounce up and down, like up and down and up and down and up and down, uh, that is. That is like a really cool image, but the thing is, the design's so ugly. I think the Saku is one of my least favorite temps. I legit think it's just 
ugly. And that's why I'm gonna pass on it. It's just too ugly. Okay, the Valash. Uh, I, th I feel like every fire would immediately smash this. <laughs> a fascinated offshoot, Valash is a rare case of bipedal hybrid documented only recently. Uh, the care with which it keeps its forearm uh, crystals sharpened uh, betrays some sort of primitive sentence. Hmm. <laughs> yep. Scarp smashes it, of course. I think I'm gonna pass on it because it, it has like the, the crystal claws and they really look like they could hurt me. I don't like to be hurt. I don't like that. Okay, Tao Li. Uh, Propertonian toddlers are taught not to be afraid of this gentle species in spite of the unnerving appearance of their large shiny legs when encountered in the forest at night. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm taking dick size into account. Yeah, that, that we should probably do. Uh, oh, wait. Ah, I see what you mean. But that also inflates the size of those claws. And that's still a pass for me. Like, your dick can be as big as you want to. If you're going to scratch off my back, I am not going to smash you. I do not wish to be hurt. And this thing looks like it's gonna hurt me in ecstasy. Okay, the Tauli is definitely a too cute to smash. This is a cuddle for sure. Also, Pokey Catch. Yeah, the Tauli is a is a cuddle. Auli, okay. Um, have to look that one up because we don't have the description. Okay. Uh, what does the description say? This lordly Temtem reigns supreme over the Aberian skies and is said to possess almost human intelligence. Some tamers are known to have even invited Auli over for an afternoon tea. Also, this is a sophisticated fella who is uh, taller than me. That is... It's not Pokey Smash! <laughs> it's Pokey Catch, bruh! <laughs> One does not simply Pokey Smash. <laughs> Ah, uh, would I smash Auli? I, I, I don't know. I totally drink a cup of tea with it. I think I'd pass, but I would invite it to tea. Banshee. Ah, uh, um, okay. Let's read the description first. Traditionally associated with the University of Arbury as its heraldic temtem, this species has a deep, piercing stare. Although winged, it prefers to keep to the ground and use its mind as a weapon, a symbol of the academics are very fond of. Yay, I got it! Thank you, Pokemon Community Game! <laughs> okay, so I think the Banshee is a very hard pass, probably the only hard pass that I will say today. I like that this is the hardest pass, probably, because I still have the Banshee PTSD and I do not want to fuck with this thing. If there's one tenter that I really don't want to fuck with, it's, it's a Banshee. Okay, Gyalis. Gyalis have appeared in many horror movies. Sadly, this has resulted in a bad reputation as a scary evil monster. Not helped by its menacing appearance, but it's... But in the hand of a kind tamer, Gyalis can be very bit as tender and loving as the plushiest piggy pig. It is really big, and it probably has an amazing junk. But this thing looks like it's gonna rip me apart in a millisecond. And I'm not up for that. I do not want to be hurt. This is a pass. Uh, Oclura. Despite their creepy appearance, Oclura are mineral eaters that never pose any dangers to humans. Their tame nature and their appetite for raw rock make them vulnerable assets for mining purposes, as the Tukmani know very well. Hmm. <laughs> You'd smash? Like you smashed the Gyalis? I don't think they tried to kill me uh, if it's consensual. <laughs> ah, I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not a fan of happy uh, of accidents, and I don't think this would be a happy little accident. I'm pretty sure this would be a really f huge fucking bloody mess, and I would not want that. So I'm not, I'm not gonna fuck the uh, Gialis. <laughs> Aklura, though, mm -hmm. I think I pass. I, I don't see anything that would make me want to smash this. Okay, a mix. Um, hmm. 
I mean, it already has a name disadvantage because I do not want to fuck Nyx. Because I hate Nyx. The oldest written records in Tukma indicate religious awe of Mix, considered to be the embodiment of the dark spirits. Some were considered to be celestial uh, missionaries of the high above, some even messengers of the down below. But we are all were feared. With good reason. Wait, what? Okay, so this is apparently like a demon thing? Like Hellspawn? Um. I don't think I would want to fuck a Hellspawn that also has crystal powers and mental powers, so it knows what I'm thinking. So like the moment I get afraid of it, it will know and it will kill me. Demons are hot, that is true, and it also has like a tentacle-ish thing going on, which is cool. But on the other hand, um, yeah, if it would read my mind, I would be dead, so I am a pass. I mean, if it if it wasn't like a demonic Hellspawn, I would probably smash, but I'm, I'm a pass on a demonic Hellspawn. Okay, Raiba. Raiba is often given to novice tamers in Omnation Dojos because it is relatively mind-tempered for a fire tam. Easier to handle than the mightier uh, varieties, uh, it is nevertheless a loyal companion and decent fighter. What is in my mind? Uh, you know that ape that does the ding ding ding? Probably that. Uh, Raiba, Raiba. Mm. Our pass is is too cute to it's too cute to smash. I've cuddled it though, but it's too it's too cute to smash. Rays, oh, fierce and indomitable as the fire. Rays are difficult to tame, but extremely uh, valuable as fighting tam. Each has a characteristic birthmark on its snout, uh, as unique as the movement of an individual flame. Hmm. <laughs> he would smash it. I don't know. It looks more like a dog. I'd cuddle it. Uh, I don't think it's a smash for me. I think it's a pass and a cuddle. Raikan, though. Hmm. Mm, it's, it's so big, you know. As the Tukmani legend goes, at the beginning of time, Tukmani and Kisilva were one single fire plane, where huge herds of Raikan ran wild and free, uh, flame and Temtem united as one. You unite the archipelago cool until the archipelago cool and these noble creatures emigrated on the ground hmm not my first resort pass <laughs> i don't know i think uh, i don't know i think i pass on the raikan but it it probably has very huge junk so i don't know if I it the the thing is I will never get drunk on a party I can tell you that much for free, but if I ever would and I would somehow end up smashing a Raikan I would also not regret it and I would probably very much enjoy it, but I'd never sober want to smash a Raikan. Puki, their flat shape allows Puki to float right under the surface of the water, while they scout around using their huge widely spaced eyes. Their iconic tail fins are often the only way to tell them apart from driftwood. I pass. It's the cute of it's the cutest mesh. Piranyant, a native species of Denise, this tenthan tends to drift with the Solario current to, cons to conserve energy. But once brought into battle, its size makes it a powerful fighter. It is two meters tall, so also, if its size makes it a powerful fighter, hmm. Also, if I had children with this thing, there would probably be a mermaid. I'd smash. I'ma smash that. I mean, huge junk. Plus, possible possibility of mermaid children. I think that's a smash. Did the counter go up? Well, now it definitely did. Uh, let me just... Okay, yeah, we're at 61. Okay, Scourbot. Uh, as the old jokes go, when you're a tamer in Shimpanku, it is not so much a matter of Scourbot, but scour when. This variety is an old sample of the Neo Edo Dojo where every generation rediscovers this industrious and friendly tem. I think it's a pass for me, it looks too much like a spider. I agree with Fox Egg. 
Okay, Scarvold. Um, let's be fair and let's actually read the description. One second. Initially mistaken as a minor mutation of Scarvard, Scarvard is strongly associated with Miyako and the bonfires the Yamashubi, Yama, Yama, Yamabushi <laughs> would light on the mountain tops on cold nights. Uh, on such an occasion, a sighting of this stem was considered a good omen. It, it still looks too much like a spider, I pass. Uh, Huglip, basically Sonic. Uh, some of the first digital Temtem were prone to accidentally catch fire. Hoglip is the answer to this problem. A little friend who is totally at home in a blaze. Given that feature, it's often used for rescue by fire crew. I'm a pass. I do not like to get burned. Gonna pass the streams here. Okay, bye Silberdrache. Thank you so much for stopping by so shortly. I hope you have an amazing Sunday. <laughs> Yeah, this stream is just gonna be weird. <laughs> okay, so. The. Hegin. The other Sonic. Mischievous but sweet, Hegin are so kawaii. Tamers are regularly reminded uh, to don fireproof gloves before petting them to avoid getting first degree burns. They are also instructed to keep them supervised in one areas. Yeah, this one's a pass. And probably not even <laughs> you like the stream. <laughs> At least someone likes it. <laughs> I'm learning a lot about your personal life. <laughs> you would smash that. That thing is hot AF. And not in a good thing. Like, like, not like in a bad sense, you know. I pass. I, I don't want my partners to hurt me. Like, you know. Seriously hurt me. As in, this might kill me if I smash that. You know. Uh, Ozuhi. Shine unassuming, Ozuhi are generally considered benevolent, steady fast friends, often confused with rock out groupings by the untrained eye. They had home in the Gino Gap. Yeah, this surpassed this to cute to smash. Ozukan! Wow, this thing did skip Black Day a lot. <laughs> Also kind of the perfect embodiment of the endurance and grit of the best Temtem fighters. They are sturdy, obstain, creat uh, obstinate creatures that love nothing better than to show their prowess in a hard, honest battle against a worthy rival. I, I think it's a pass. I mean, uh, it's, it's just a leg day. It skipped too much leg day. The Ozukai, though, that is just, you know... Is a tall boy. It probably has a lot of junk. Is smash. Easy decision. Massive form Ozukai are as hard as granite. They are credited with much of the boring heavy lifting during the construction of the tunnels on the Kaliman range. Yeah, also four hands. I agree. This is definitely a smash. Okay, the Saipad. Nothing says amateur like making fun of Saipad. Sure, they might look comical at first glance, but nothing who has faced a totally focused Saipad, a sturdy core in hand, makes them anything but seriously. Hmm. Imagine how good he'd do in the kitchen. He could give me a hand job uh, while doing kitchen stuff. That is true. Like, the Ozokai could fuck you and cook for you at the same time. The Saipad, though. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. It, it kind of looks like it would, it would just really go at you with a dildo, and like fuck you up, which you know, appreciated. But at the same time, I I don't think I'm into the the side part. I I think it will be forever senpai, you know, because it's just, it just has that big dick energy. Not gonna lie, but I wouldn't smash it. I think it's it's a it's a pass. I mean, although, mm, ah, it, it's difficult. I think, I think the beak is turning me a little bit off. 
But other than that, I, I think it definitely has like the big dick energy that uh, is is good for the for the smashing. So, yeah. Paiko, uh, bubbly and cheerful, this ten is the protagonist of an animation series aimed at one of the children of the dangers of fire. It has been a lifelong friend to many first time tamers. Uh, pass. Again with the fire. Okay, Drakash, I have to look up. Uh, selective breeding for bipedalism meant a variety of tem uh, is faster and more suited for human tasks uh, than its predecessors, often given as a New Year's gift between his evening and Stukmani. Hmm. Nah. Nah. That's a pass. This is not a whole fire thing, I think. Native to Tukmara crystal are akin to smaragdine turtles, but they are actually closer to minerals than to fauna. Uh, cute but tough. They are an excellent introductory crystal tem for rookies. Also Pokey Catch. It's a pass, but it's a call. Definitely a call. Sherald. Sherald uh, are known to evolve from crystal in the wild as a result of exposure to harsh environmental conditions of Tukma. They extract nutrients from the chemical interactions of metamorphic rocks and volcanic ashes. Um, I'm a pass. This is not mine, I don't think. Tortonai. Tortonines are lumbering creatures, often employed by Tukmani miners as work companions. In the wild, they are often spotted herding Sherald as pack leader. I mean, it's big, but it's also really heavy. I think it's too heavy to smash. It's, it's a pass. It's a pass. Inki. Known as the most elusive Tem in Shimpanku. Uh, possession of an inky is the ultimate marker of mastery amongst new Edo tamers. Uh, would I smash though? Hmm. The thing is, uh, someone who heavily inspired me to start a content creation is called Inky. She's spelled with one N. So I, I don't think I could smash it. I can't smash that. Shower light and nobody caught it. Pokemon community game, you're being mean. If there's a Tem whose reputation has a cutie overshadows its proficiency, it's Shaolite. Oh, look, small karate car. It's often heard right before a crushing defeat. Yeah, I think it's too cute to smash. It, it's, a, it's a pass. Shaoland, uh, how big are you? 150? Hmm. I don't know. If there's a Tem whose reputation... Oh no, that's the... Shaolite, Shaolan, there we go. Bigger and meaner than Shaolite, Shaolan have become the darlings of the Tamers of Lochbok Dojo, uh, who want to command respect of their choice of squad. Hmm. Nah. Nah. I don't think I'm into that. I, I think the Shaolan is just... It's like small... And it's, it's, it looks so much like the shower light. I think it's, it's, it's still too cute. It's too cute. I probably just cuddle it. Psychrox. Okay, now we're talking. The rumors uh, tell of a mimic that fell into slaughter. Um, another one of a Nanto boffin accidentally spilled coffee on some circuit. Whereas it may, Psychrox is as close as it gets to a computer virus. Uh, button the flash and the silicon. Okay. Hmm. It's not that much of a big boy, but I I, I think it has quite the big tongues, so I, I think that's that's a smash. Like that that tongue bonus is just you you can't underestimate the tongue. 
Uh, Hocus, I actually don't have that yet. Wow. I have I don't have a lot of Thames. I need to catch all the Thames at some point. Arcane and blue blooded Hocus have been uh, selectively bred for generations and kept a, a dynastic heirloom of the House of Brayside. Uh, they are fine weapons trained to uh, be better tam -tam for the ancient aristocracy, a rare sight nowadays. Hmm. I think it's too cute to fuck. It's a, it's, it's a pass, but it's a cuddle. I, I kind of like it though, like it, it has blue blood and I am I'm only a humanoid, I also have blue blood, so we're, we're kind of similar I feel like, so I, I kind of feel connected to it on a spiritual level, but um, yeah, I, I wouldn't smash it. What does the pocus say though? Hmm. Would we smash the pocus? Pocus was considered blue-blooded among the blue bloods, but was traditionally given uh, only to male heirs of the House of Brayside. When the lineage fell, uh, they mostly went extinct, and s extinct until recently. Hmm. Okay, so this one's a big boy, like 190. She. Look for two sex. Okay, see you in a sec or two. <laughs> I think the Pocus is a smash. Like it is, it has the blue blood, which I'm into. Um, it is, it is a big tem. It looks awesome. It looks mysterious. It is a mental tem. It, it checks all the marks, you know. Okay, schmaltzy. I actually have to look up. A uh, few tem tem looks so deceptively comical as schmaltzy. Uh, underestimating it in battle is the mark of a rookie tamer. Beyond their adorable, helpless appearance, they are appreciated for some of the most reliable electric tam for daily use. Hmm. I don't know. I, I'd use it to fuel my toaster, and that's it. This is a pass. Also known familiarly as Sparky, this tam tam. It's a common sight in Shampanku. Children are warned to keep away from them. Although normally good natured and cheerful, they can invulnerably discharge considerable electric shocks. I'm not into electric shocks, this is a pass. Okay, God see. Read by the patient priests of Miyaka from local varieties of electric tem. God sees a gentle giant that helps the villagers carry heavy loads through the difficult mountain passes. Their constant presence has become a symbol of the monastery. Uh, it's big though. Oh, that's... Mm. Mm. It is big, but it's electric. I, I pass. I pass. Oh, mushy. <laughs> Closely related to the non-sentient fungi of the corrupted backlands, mushy are shy the territory. Always mineral hungry, wise tamers keep them well away from crystal town. Uh. I don't know. On one hand, it's a mushy, which in Jam means pussy. On the other hand, you probably get high when you fuck it. I don't know. I think I pass. It's too cute to... It is too cute. It's too cute to smash. Okay, Mushok. Mushok are a hybrid variety developed by the Kwesa Dojo by expert breeders. Strong and single-minded, some of the bigger specimens are occasionally employed by the guards as static series uh, at strategic points. It's a big boy. You'll probably get high when you fuck it. And all in all, it has even more positives than the Mushi, so I think it's a smash. I, I smash that. It, it will probably also smash me in the face, but smash is smash. 
Magma's original habitat was in the lava rivers under the Anak Caldera. But now they can be found all around the archipelago as foundry operators in Quasar heating systems in Arbury and of course in Temtem metals. I pass. Not into fire temps. Mastion. Mastion are fire loving Tem at home in the fiercest of blazes. They can be found glazing in woods devoured by wildlife. The tamed varieties learn to rain in their destructive tendencies, but even then trainers should exercise caution. Ah, pass. Not my thing. Hey, we had 69 passes, woo! Omishi! The Omishi feature in many Denisian tales, usually saving drowning sailors and helping them to get to shore. These so-called sea angels are dependable friends that our reverend fellowship recommends every member keep at least one in the squad. Hmm. Looks like a vibrator. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I think it's... Uh, no. I, uh, no. The, the fins... The fins kind of make me think it's it's not good use for a vibrator. So I, I pass. It's not vibrator enough. Yokama. Yokama, also known in Tokesa as sea sickles, are one of the fastest waterborne temtem. They can easily outrun the sleekest sailboat, even swimming against the slower current, so tamers have to use charm and guile to approach them. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a pass. Right, Ned. Have to look up. Um, oops. Garvanit goes fast. Often paired for comedic effect, Garvanit is the downer counterpart to Spazi's manic person persona. Given its usually serious expression, this tem is the perfect butt of all jokes, which concedes a very effective range of attacks. Hmm. It's electric. I can't with electric. It's a pass. Okay, now the right net. Uh, when suddenly all the cutlery in your kitchen flies out the window, you know this term is nearby. In fact, it uses its magnetic powers to move its own heavy metallic body. The chimpanzee always keep them away from their fridges. It is a pass. <laughs> Thank you for throwing stuff at me. <laughs> Ooh! Scarf, you got the auto cannon! Congrats! <laughs> that was cool! Congrats, Scarp. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Also, can go, bro. I had to hydrate, sorry. These little darlings have been bred for generations as playmates and babysitters for children. The okay, baby fighters. Quasi are natural cheerful and love playing and monkeying around. Hmm. <laughs> and just like when bonk brr. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's a pass. I think it's a pass. But bong. Hmm. Babong are evolved sweet fighting tem. Very popular in Lochberg, where they are often employed by pub bouncers. Although naturally good tempered, they are as fierce as they are hot headed. Hmm. I pass. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. Hmm. Seismunch. Hmm. He's a big boy. So that is a plus. What does the wiki say? Seismunch are great apes 
genetically close to human is much more sophisticated than the lesser brethren. Highly imitative of human behavior, some are said to be being proto-human condition. I smash! <laughs> Make sure to hydrate before extreme hugging session. I will. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. And see you in a sec, Fox Egg. Yeah. Seismonge is definitely a, a smash. Sizare. Hmm. One of the most remarkable inhabitants of the Kasiman Savannah, the powerful Sizare, are the biggest creeping temtem. Proud and territorial, they make for staunch friends. It's small though. Like 180, that's pretty small. Also, it, it has it has spikes, so I, I pass. I think I missed one. Oh no, I, I, I didn't. Oh, Pocky Catch! Okay, Gorong. Angry and with a red nose, Gorong attacks many jokes, attracts many jokes about how much it looks like a Lochberg pub patron. Usually, a couple of assaults are enough to put an end to such taunts for good. Hmm. Often derided by Lochbergian tamers as a typical Propertonian cute boy the packs nor punch, but here are gentle and curious tams, but also fast learners and extremely effective in the heads of experienced tamers. Too cute to cuddle, I pass. Uh, too cute to uh, fuck, I cuddle, I pass. Okay, Sunbee. Often derided by Lochbergian tamers as a. Oh no, Sunbee? Capable of communicating moods and intentions via complex patterns of its uh, tribal tail, these temps are love creatures who prefer to uh, soli solitudes of the Iberian Highlands, although they most likely keep to themselves. Their mind powers are formidable. Hmm. Hmm. Yay, Scuff and I caught it! Woo! Ah, uh, I think I might pass. I think I pass. This is this is, this doesn't intrigue me. More, more. All the furries say yes. Um, while some temtemologists point to the primeval forest of Arbury and Chimpanque as possible origins of the species, there's plenty of archaeological proof uh, of their early domestication around Lake Moyo. I, I pass on Mo Momo. Momo's too cute to fuck. I, I just want to cuddle Momo. Another great example of adaptation to the environment. These little... Hey, we're at 100. Uh, these little Temtem select and crave rocks to use as protection for their hands and snouts. Hmm. Hmm. I pass. I'd cuddle though. Car Karen. <laughs> Not to be confused with their previous uh, evolutive stage, the species develop stone hard horns and skull extensions. These are used for digging out roots, defense, and status signaling uh, within the herd. I pass because it's a Karen and I don't fuck with Karen. Spiral. These little sprouts are a common sight along the omniscient canopy, and the locals are always gentle with them. These little pups are playful and juvenile. I pass. It's too cute to fuck. I would only cuddle. 
Dendra. A young adult version of Spyro. Dendra are fascinating plant animal hybrids that use their en encephalic leaves to produce healing and nourishing uh, components by photosynthesis. I would also pass, but I would cuddle. Sanyav. Ooh, this is a big boy. That's a very big boy. Sanyas are the uh, fully evolved species of an iconic Amnesian ranch. Halfway between flora and fauna, they might yet uh, grace. They are might yet graceful creatures. The power concealed under the elegant movement. Mm, it's so big, though. It's so big. Ah, oh, it's so big. It's so big. It's so big. Ah. Oh. Also, it will heal you. It won't hurt you. I think it's a smash. It, it might even be a hey. I might want to live with you for forever. Like you know, like this might be even more than a smash. This might be a relationship. Okay, Toxilotl. Perhaps no other Temtem is as representative of Tukma as the colorful Toxilotl. Each strand is its main is supposed to signify one of the original Tukmani tribes that first excavated in, in Kressa after the Anak uh, Cataclysm. Hmm. I pass. It's too cute to smash. Way too cute to smash. Noxolotl. I have to look up. Apparently, I never evolved one of my toxos. I should do that at some point. Might be a good idea. Noxolotl are noble, dignified creatures. They are taken to exemplify the resilience and spirit of the Dogmani people as a beautiful born of the foulest depths of uh, Slotl, a light in the abyss. In the words of the poet uh, Itzita. Okay. Hmm. Okay, it's, uh, hear me out. It's a big boy. It's got them tentacles. It has four eyes. It might be poisonous, but I think you will not get killed by the poison. I think you will just get high. So I'm gonna smash that. Also, it looks amazing. Blows. Blows represent the opposite evolutionary path compared to Toxlotl. Blobby and Bipedal, they are probably the oldest life form of Xlotl and Atavic variety still largely unexplained by science. Uh, it's a big boy, it's got the tongue. I mean, you will also probably get high of it because it has the toxic skin. I think I might smash that. I think it's a smash, yeah. It's smashable. It's not the ugliest thing in the planet and it, it's kind of cool. I smashed the blows. Uh, yeah, this is a pass. It's just a pass. <laughs> I don't think anyone would want to smash that. Not many agree to classify gold as an evolution, as many of its traits seem to be um, vestigial features of a more complex organism um, devoted to a more primitive or astrophed state. Its lack of legs is usually cited as an example, but its hazard have hazard appearance and see great strength. Uh, fuck the strength. Fuck that Tam. Because I won't fuck that. Just no. Like look at the look at the cute little blows. Totally fuckable. And then look at this monstrosity. Just no. Okay. Zephyroth. Awkward flyers at best. Zephyroth rely on their speed and sharp claws to defend themselves. The sturdy, cloud-like textures around the neck serves a dual purpose, offering protection uh, for the mother Tentem as well as a roosting point for Zephyroth chicks. Yeah, pass. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think I'm gonna pass on the bird too. I don't think I'm into the bird thing. Okay, Volarant. I actually have to look up. Bonarant are impressive avians of great wingspan. 
strong enough to carry humans in flight. However, they are uh, temperamental and picky mounts, and tamers are well advised to treat them kindly. Last, at least uh, they are given a one-way ticket to the dummy law. Okay, so if this bird doesn't like passionately hugging with you, it will murder you, so I pass on that. I am not into that. Grumble. Sulky as a grumble is a common Ururian idiom, uh, casually addressed at comically malcontent little kids. Nah. I pass. I don't like the horn. Grandpa. I don't need a description. I just pass. Uh, okay, fine. I read the description. I doubt that it can change my mind, but I read it. Often the butt of dojo jokes, grandpa are an evolutive mystery. While some entomologists claim they are just grandma with overdeveloped horns, some others claim it's a completely different genus. No, nah, still pass. Genki. Many Jinpaki legends mention the powerful but kind Genki as mountain spirits, mythologically related uh, to lightning and whirlwinds. Although they are no longer revered as kami, Shimpanki still appreciate and breed them. Mm -hmm, I think I pass. I would cuddle it though. It is very cute. Gazuma. Um, even in the wild, younger Genkis seem to instinctively respect them as their elders. In the hills of Iwaba, one can often spot Gazuma leading small flocks of Genki, a clear indication the status among electric time. I pass, but I'd still cuddle it. Osiara, now we're getting interesting. Very rare scene in Denise, Osiara are believed to be the basis for the legendary Sebatio, the Sea Queen legend. Possessing them is a mark of distinction and prestige amongst water temptum experts. I agree, I'd smash it too, yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah, it, it's a smash. I, I don't think I have to explain it. The Yaula, another big boy. Considered vanquishingly rare uh, until Linnea's work, this lonesome Tem inhabits the most inaccessible Klima peaks where they keep large, fiercely defendant hunting ranges. Mm -hmm. It has claws. It is a big boy and probably has a big junk, but it's also really heavy, so... I pass. Not into that. Uh, did the counter go up? I hope it did. Dropley. Although not particularly popular among tamers, Dropley is used by many schools as a prime example of an early Acapillan amphibian, a crucial link to the evolution of Earthbound Tam. I pass. It's, it's too cute. I would cuddle it though. Definitely cuddle. Uh, Gario. Semi aquatic and very gregarious. They are often found along the shores of Lake Mio, where local farmers train them to harvest seaweed and warn away any boats with their swan hisses. Mm -hmm. Nah, I pass. It's too small. Um, Brock Coblin. At home in the denser part of the forest, the species is very adaptive for camouflage and once they overcome their natural shyness, they make for great friends for Tamers of all ages. I pass. It's too cute. It is way too cute. Rock Orc. Need to look up. Where are you? There you are. Bigger and more agile. This variety still lives in symbiosis with its surrounding floor, but it is generally more sociable and easier to train. A favor, a favorite of Propertyn grannies who love gardening. I pass. One does not simply fucking orc. Rock Golem. Hmm. This one's more complicated. 
probably the origin of all legends about drylands and forest trolls. This time is hulking quasi arboreal of impressive strength and resilience, like an oak, if oaks could punch. Is a big boy, is a strong boy, is a leafy boy, is a golem boy. I think it's a smash. Because I am definitely team golem. And I'm very, very sad that the sniffer won. I would have loved to welcome the tough golem. Team golem will be sad forever. Okay, Shrina. I also don't have a Shrina, apparently. Colorful Shrina are a sight to behold. Their bright sky reflection pants in light uh, as they frolic in the Kama Synod. They feed off the acidic components of slot water, acting as natural flyers and keeping Kinote waters clean and fit for human consumption almost as effectively as the layers of volcanic rock. Hmm. Volcanic rock, sorry. Uh, do I smash that? I don't know. I don't like the horns. I don't smash. This is a pass. Nestla. Water and electricity are always a dangerous mix. Never more so than in the case of Nestla. These undulating, majestic creatures are at home in open waters where their powerful electric discharge are most efficiently. <laughs> Could get deep in. <laughs> also, Pokey Catch. I think I smashed the Nestla. I don't have balls! I cannot type. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I smashed the Nesla. Uh, did I already press the button? Don't think I did. No, I did. Dahlia. Hmm. Although nobody has managed to decipher their language, the Valia are assumed to be extremely intelligent. The Arborian Dons are still trying to come up with a scientific explanation for the way Valia uses their expanding ears to boost their minds. Hmm. It's a big boy. Also, it's a very pretty boy. And that horn doesn't look that sharp. I think it's a smash. I smashed that. That's a smash. Huh, how did, have I never caught this one? I, I, I was sure I had that. Okay. Pop poise then. Nature finds a way, particularly when nature meets some of the most advanced circuits. Papyrus are adaptive and are known uh, to use simple tools and other innovations in the wild. Uh, yay, both of us caught it! The Pokemon community game is nice to us today. I think the Papyrus is too cute to smash. It's a, it's a pass, but I cuddle it. I would definitely cuddle it. Luato, I think this is their evolution. Pokemon community game likes our decisions. <laughs> Probably. This Temtem states the twilight zone between natural and artificial intelligence, life and death, and the fact it resembles a dark creature from ancient lore doesn't help its reputation one bit. Uh, it, it is a big boy, but it's a scary boy. Also, why does it have a stick coming through it? I, I don't like that. Also, it has horns and is and is heavy and uh, yeah, I pass, I pass. It's it's a weird one. Okay, Kalasu, Kalasu now shows remarkable fine motor skills with each of their tentacles. Sen Kalasu is a common expression of woe in the knees when you face a hard task. You might need a hand, and when you get eight hands, why well, you're in trouble. I think it's a pass, but I would cuddle it. You would smash it? <laughs> I, I cuddle. I cuddle Kalasu. Kalabis, though. 
Uh, how Solarian octopods came in contact with mutagenic material is a matter of debate, but Calabas stands as an example of extreme adaptation to the harshest environments. Uh, they have been known to survive a swim in Slotl Reservoir. I smashed that. I would totally smash that. I would, I would also like to believe that you will also get high when you smash a cal Calabas because it has the toxic skin. So this is just, this is just amazing. A Doraboros. Few Tem are as adaptive as the Doraboros, an unusual mix of cute and deadly, combined with the most sophisticated mental tricks with the base set toxic traits. They are a fine example of the incredible natural diversity in the archipelago. It's too cute, I can't smash that. It's too cute. I cuddle it. I pass and I cuddle it. 2Y. Princess Constantinus described 2Y as taxonomically wind, but also the only Denisian tem with meta uh, mimetic properties. He theorized about the possibilities of 2Y changing dramatically if the relevant place of power could be found. It's John Oliver, basically. And I. I uh, yeah, I smash. I smash. Tukai. Uh, I guess we have to individually smash them. Oh, I said something different about Tukai. It is unclear whether Professor Constantinus ever discovered this evolution uh, when its flaming acromine wings, but uh, a true feat of meta mimetic evolution unseen elsewhere in the archipelago. Hmm. Yeah, I still smash that. I mean, it's just John Oliver, you know? It's like, yeah, I smash. Okay, Tulkan. Ah, I, 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 I might pass on that one because I'm not too keen on the fire aspects still. So let's see what they say about the Tulkan. Sometimes entomologists argue that Tulkan are the remains of an extinct species endemic to the upper slopes of an arc before the breakup of the island. Um, allude to Mauritian myth as fire breathers and Shimpanko folklore as flame come. Yeah, no, I pass. You might have to join Oliver bonus, but you're still hot. Okay, to v to Wiener. <laughs> ah, to Wiener. Just how a crystal tem manages to fly effectively is still a mystery to most entomologists. Some theorize its flight is aided by magnetic reports generated by mineral organs. But most tamers just enjoy their emerald majests without asking questions. It's too sharp for me, I, I pass. Okay, to rock. Uh, Turok is, in the words of Linnea, a meeting of opposites, a flying rock, stone on wings, an impossibility and yet reality, further proof of the marvelous diversity of Temtem life forms. <laughs> you like the color and that's about it? Yeah, I think I passed too. I, I wouldn't like to have that in my bed. It's probably also like crumb crumbling and stuff because it's stone. Okay, it's who wire. What do they say about you? One of the strangest evolutionary paths to wire descends from escaped digital tem crossing with wild wind varieties. Aerodynamically speaking, they shouldn't be able to fly, but they do. Uh, I pass. I pass. Ooh, Tutsu though. Tutsu looks cool. Uh, oh, how did I just do that? Um, I, I figured that out in a second. Um, first described by reputed breeder Nala of Fumbi, Tutsu is like a sunstorm, a nimble yet mighty bird of prey, fiery when facing much bigger opponents. It's said that all Tutsu are descended from Nalas. I smash that. I would smash that. Kino. The elusive Kino are some of the most rarest nature tem in the Mistress. Uh, to the point that some tamers think they are mere legend. When they do show up, omniscience treat them with great respect, reserved for the guiding spirit of Anak. Okay, so here's the thing. I would totally want to smash this, but it's way too cute. If this thing had an evolutionary state, of which I've seen a lot of fan art on Reddit, I would smash it, but I can't. This is too cute. The fan art I would smash. Okay. 
Volvia. Some academics speculate that this is the last remnant of a long lost draconic variety of Temtem. In practice, Temtem's most tamers classify Temtem as Fire Earth, which is an accurate designation for those mighty but shy creatures. I, I pass, it's too cute, I can't. Volor. Although they hide their faces in hollow rocks like their lesser brethren, these Tem have very little to fear from their environment. Thus as stone and destructive as fire, they are a force to be reckoned with. I pass. Is 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 still too cute. Oh Vulcrane though. Vulcranes are sometimes described as a knock on two legs. If a variety of draconic looking Thames ever existed, they couldn't have been much fiercer than this advanced flaming beast. I smash. Is a big tem. Is a cool tem. It probably holds me warm, Kali. It has abs. I smash. Piggy Pig. An absolute favorite of toddlers all around the archipelago. Piggy Pig are fluffy, soft, and absolutely adorable. Voluminous and cumbersome. They normally float lower over the ground, making them ideal playmates for some children. I, I pass. I have to cuddle that thing. It's too cute. Akanox. Well armed with a mighty stinger and protected by rug rock like armor. Kranox can aff afford to have flashy colored pincers and a cocky attitude, making them a favorite a of Archipelagian teens. You're like, oh no, this can't be. Just remembered when I found out I'm gay. What? <laughs> I <laughs> That's an interesting reaction to coming out to oneself. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm passing on the Akranox. It's, it's not my, my cup of tea. Okay, Quish. Unique amongst all tam Temtem, uh, Quish subspecies are known to span all Temtem types. This extreme range of diversity is attributed to early mutations in the slotl Mayon Salarian Ocean of Prehistoric Peninsula. I was like, man, but that's weird. That's what I. What will I do? Oh. That's adorable. Uh, I think I would smash the Quish. I think it's smashable. Fluffy! Uh, extremely perceptive and aware, the species flourished in all senses of the word in the great expanse of wild land. Although they are inquisitive by nature, they never shy away from human contact. I I, I, I can't smash that. I have to pass. It's, it's too cute. I will cuddle it. I will cuddle it to death, but I cannot smash that. Chubby! What started as an experiment in artificial pollination has resulted in the birth of this endearingly round fluffy boy. Although not great flyers, chubby compensate their cumbersome with digital reliability. I pass. It is too cute. I can't fuck that. Was peen. Not even Professor Konstantinos could get this, guess this evolutionary stage. While Waspin loses its pre uh, predecessor's flight, it develops powerful crystal spikes. Yeah, I, I'm passing on the spikes. I, I'm not a fan of spikes. Mortal. Mortal smiley face. Mortal smiley face has become a meme amongst the youngest generation of every dojo, making the species feel hackneyed to some. Regardless of any fats, it uh, re remains a solid choice for any tamer as well as a Teshi Wonder. And I think it's too cute to fuck, so I will cuddle it. I will pass on it. Uh, more men's. Okay, big boy. Uh, Visesia herself rides a more men's into battle in Indira the Second, making it extremely cool and thought after. The entomologist argues it's an acronism, since this is a very recent variety, but who listens to entomologists anyway? Ah, nah. I don't want to smash it. I, I don't like the horns. I pass. Has read. If Temtem can develop in this lottery reservoir, why couldn't wouldn't they thrive in the sewers of Properton? Warning: All specimens of this species are required to undergo dojo-approved detox process to make them safe to handle. I I pass. I I don't want to fuck a rat. Minto, a sweet innocent appearance that conceals great brain power. 
Uh, this species has roamed the Glengan forest for centuries, in small herds grazing peacefully in the undergrowth and following the bigger male hawks. It's too cute, I can't, I have to pass. It's too cute, I would cuddle it, but I have to pass. Minox, Charles Temwin uh, developed his theory of Temtem evolution by establishing a genetic link uh, between the little, gentle, minter and this mighty bullish evolutionary stage. It has too many horns, I cannot fuck that. Minothor! Some of the oldest cave paintings in the Chinchi Guado are said to represent prehistoric Minothor. Its ability to transform mental power into electricity and vice versa must have looked like magic to the early humans. <laughs> you would smash it? Uh, I was like, I like man, but that's weird. That's what I would do. Smash. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, I would smash the Minothor just because I want to know what the hell Europa thought when she was um, fucking Zeus as he when he was a, um, a bull. So... That's the only reason why I would fuck the Minotaur. Just to find that out. Moala. A favorite of Lord Borgian Tamers, Moalas are companionable temtem, always up for fun party or heavy battle, equally at home in the dojo and in the pub. I, I, and I'm sorry, but I don't... I really don't like the Moala. They always fall asleep. and I, I don't need that in a, in a partner. I, I pass. The Vengs, this cute little warrior, is popular among young tamers who love to customize their own with uh, bandages of different colors and patterns. Some dojos are enforcing a more formal white bandage coat for serious competition. I pass. Then Matt, I have to look up. Sometimes more is more, and this evolution makes for a winning combination of resilient and sheer power. Some historians suggest this species was widely used by reveres on both sides during the turbulent era of Chieftain MacEd. Ah, uh, I, 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 I pass. It, it's not my cup of tea. Mental. Uh, Lady Catherine of Properton herself popularized the species among the fashionable tamers of her age. Nowadays, it is considered one of the timeless classics of Iberian Temtem breeds. I can't fuck it, it's too cute, I'm sorry. It's too cute. Chimurian. Some urban legend claims this variety wasn't tamed or bred as much as extracted from mineral ores in the deepest pits of Quessar. Uh, just how its roots interface with the crystals of its blood is still a subject of scientific study. I do not want to fuck an ostrich. I do not want to fuck an uh, emu. I I pass. <laughs> you smash. Oh, pokey catch time. Yeah, I, I pass on the Chimurian. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I, I'm hurrying up. I'm already at number 157. I'm hurrying up. Ach, Nita. Uh, with way too many likes for anyone's liking. Yeah, I agree. This is a pass. Next. Uh, Taiko. Is too cute. Developed as a joint project between Lochbergen and Neo Edo, this little furry Bruiser combines uh, feline breeding, savior flair with cutting edge technology, a hard fix to prevent hairboards, is expected any time now. Yeah, it's a pass, but it's a cuddle. Monko. Um, advanced material arts training after breeding ensures the stem is cut above and less prestigious. Although the priest of uh, Miyako found at the new Temtem species, uh, Marcos Confused based on their techniques. I pass, but I will cuddle it and I will keep it in my living room. Okay, almost there. Anna here. This tortured creature is the result of Dr. Hamihu's attempts to create a new diamond variety. By picking the sturdiest variety of crystal tem and subjecting it to the harshest fire environment of Nak, it has achieved something unique and uniquely cruel. I would pass on Anna here, but I must say it, I would adopt her and I would treat her, treat her like a queen. She would be my baby. Okay, then we don't know this time. Uh, Tyrannach, probably the last living relic from a distant pre-human past when Megatem roamed the Unbroken Peninsula. Most temptologists consider it to be cryptofauna until, well, until now. Okay, um, 
this thing's giant it will probably crush me i do not like that ways um i pass no thank you okay i think this is the last one in Chimpanki Lord ranks are born of lightning and roam the vast reaches of heaven. Sometimes a curious member of their race will visit the archipelago and befriend human and they never consider tamed. They merely uh, consent to accompanying a tame for a few years or even a decade. I pass. It's electric. And I think we're done. We're done! Oh, this only took us two hours. Thank fuck. We're done. We would f smash 33... Tam Tams, including the Mimit, and we would pass on the other 129. Yeah, it's been two hours. <laughs> it has been two hours, and I will end the stream now, believe it or not. <laughs> because I am done. <laughs> believe it or not, but this actually took a lot out of me. I am so done right now. I am so done with the world and everything. I am done, 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 done. I will join Akephalos' raid, and that is it. And then, uh, like, not raid, like, Leia, and I will raid Akephalos. And then you guys can, I don't know, uh, see me do the, le the Leia there if you want to, so. Ah, uh, ten times measure pass. We actually did it. Thank you so much for, thank you for the code. I will immediately join. Thank you so much for uh, actually g getting me to 100 followers. I did not <laughs> think that was possible. <laughs> Uh, it means a lot <laughs> to hear that you as a person uh, who, who is not attracted to the females, you would smash me. That is very nice to hear. <laughs> I take it as a compliment. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the Temtem Smasher Pass. I will probably upload this to YouTube rather sooner than later. Um... I don't know if I will be have the time to edit it, honestly, but I will upload the word. I definitely upload this word. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I see you in whichever video stream or whatever you will watch next. Bye.